Praise the Lord. This is Elder Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. God bless you on this uh, Wednesday afternoon. We bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are grateful and thankful to the Lord for our very existence today. And without him, we could not move, live, or have our being. And so we honor God, uh, who is the head of our life. We honor our honorable pastor and the person of Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison Sr., and Lady Paulette of the Pentecostal Power Church here in our great city of Milwaukee. Uh, definitely want to honor my own wife. Uh, want to honor my own wife, Missionary Newsom. Uh, we want to uh, definitely uh, give honor to her. I want to thank God for Missionary Newsom uh, as we give honor to her uh, for uh, what God has done for her and her family as well as my family. Uh, want to say to the people of God that we appreciate your support uh, starting out on the uh, second month of this uh, year of 2022. We want to uh, thank all of our supporters and subscribers for supporting us. And we could not have uh, done some of the things that we have done uh, up to this present point uh, without the Lord and without your assistance and your uh, devotion, love and compassion and even um, your donations uh, that have uh, supported us uh, on last year. And so we are uh, still looking for you to support us, uh, do some greater things on this year. We have some other things that we'd like to do and we need your support to help us do it. But we're gonna get right into the word of the Lord today, but we want to say thank you uh, first and foremost. And we'll probably be coming uh, at the end of this month with our petition and request for the assistance that we need uh, if you would be willing to help us. And uh, so far, uh, you have gotten us to a good start. And so we have just a couple more pieces we need to add to the broadcast so we can uh, uh, make it what uh, God wants it to be and also make it more user friendly uh, for our viewers and subscribers to easily access and join us. Okay. And it will be at no cost to you because we only uh, like once or twice a year, we ask for support. So we don't, we're not on here every week uh, asking for money and asking for financial support. We only ask when we need to make an upgrade or make a change um, to the services uh, that the Lord has allowed us to provide to the people of God. And so we want to say thank you and God bless you for that. Uh, we want to get into our topic today. Uh, before we do that, we want to uh, definitely request prayer for all of the families, the Bullock family, our senior bishop, Bishop Floyd Scott, our presider, assistant presider, and all of the pastors and all of the ministerial body, especially the center man and the center woman uh, that's desiring to be saved and have came across this broadcast and it has uh, benefited or helped you in some type of way. We want to say God bless you and thank you for joining the Fidget TV Network. If this uh, ministry or this broadcast has blessed you in any type of way, please don't hesitate to click subscribe and share with us uh, how this broadcast have helped and benefited you. I uh, just want to say first off, uh, as we desire prayers for the people of God, continue to pray for my pastor and first lady. Pray for Ellen Newsom, Missionary Newsom. Pray for my family. Pray for my dad. Uh, dad is doing better now. Um, so we do want to thank all of our uh, prayer warriors and those that touch and agree with us on the touch and agree broadcast. Uh, Dad is doing much, uh, much better. Um, there's still some improvement uh, that uh, we're believing God for. But we want to thank God for what he's already done. And we're very, very grateful for God raising him back up. And he's back walking. Uh, he's back, um, uh, you know, functioning like he's supposed to. And so we thank God for that. And so hopefully, uh, if the Lord's will on next week, we'll be getting him out. Uh, we're going to get him out uh, for a couple hours and uh, let him, you know, get around. You know, none of us want to be cooped up. And so we hope that will help aid him in his mobility. And so, saints, we ask that you would continue to keep praying for him. Uh, continue to pray for the Dotson, uh, Murchison, Pfizer family. Uh, Newsom family, pray for the Bullock family, uh, pray for, there was another uh, family that needed prayer. Uh, 
they mentioned it on last night, and I should have wrote it down, but uh, there's a family in particular that needs prayer. And so we want to pray uh, for that particular family as well, that the Lord will uh, touch and strengthen that family, uh, the Weatherspoon family. Yes, please pray for Bishop Weatherspoon and uh, the Old Dominion Church. Pray for them, that the Lord will bless them and strengthen them and all of those uh, that are going through at this time. And uh, just pray that God will continue to comfort uh, and aid them uh, at their time of need. Uh, so we want to go ahead and offer prayer and then we're going to get into our topic. I'll let you know what the topic is as we uh, get through uh, our prayer. So we ask that you would join us briefly in a brief moment of prayer. Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne of grace and before thee, O God, to give you thanks and praise just for who you are, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God, every time we come before your presence, we thank you. And, oh, God, our hearts is filled with praise and adoration to you, oh, God, who have made these things possible. You've made the impossible possible. Thank you, Lord. And, oh, God, you've made the challenges doable. And, Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. We thank you now. We ask, oh, God, you will bless, oh, God, our heads, our leaders, and, oh, God, the brethren, as well as, oh, God, the sisters in the body of Christ as a whole. Look on, oh, God, that sinner man and sinner woman that's desiring to be saved, that becoming saint, that's striving, oh, God, oh, God, to go higher and know more about your word and revelation of who you are in the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. Oh, God, help us to be made conformable unto your death, that we also, God, will continue to die daily in the name of Jesus, that, oh, God, that Christ would live through us and that somebody would see Christ and oh God say, what must I do to be saved? Touch them, God. Honor repentance now in the name of Jesus. When they know to do good and did not do it, God, we pray God and we petition you for mercy. Oh God, even in our ignorance, God, we pray and ask, oh God, your mercy that you will cover us, oh God. And oh God, continue to teach us thy ways, oh Lord, that we may teach transgressors Oh, God, to turn and serve the true and living God. Father, we thank you. We forever give you glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for a great deliverance, even those, oh, God. Oh, God, that are hurting now, send healing, grant deliverance. In the name of Jesus, to the glory of God, help us to decrease. Hallelujah. Glory that your anointing may increase. Oh, God, look on Bishop Mark Jones, oh, God, in the church there in Florida, and all the saints, oh, God, as well as, oh, God, our Bishop Bullock and Mother Bullocks. Bless them, O oh God. Peace Temple, touch in the name of Jesus. All of our churches, God, the NPPCI churches, touch right now. Every member, God, touch right now. Strengthen us, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch that heart, that mind that's viewing, O oh God. Those that's on looking the service right now, we pray, God, you will meet them at their point of need. And Father, that you would send healing, O oh God, and you would grant deliverance in the name of Jesus to the glory of God. And Father, we thank you. We forever give you praise. Continue to touch my dad, Lord. Touch the siblings, God. Continue to strengthen God and encourage. And Father, we forever thank you and give you glory on and praise. In Jesus' name, to the glory of God, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So we thank God for uh, the brief prayer that's been prayed. And we're believing God uh, for you. Not only for what we've asked for, but we're believing God for your deliverance. And so as we get ready uh, to get into our broadcast today, we want to talk about our restoring spiritual vision. Yes, we want to talk about it today. Restoring spiritual vision. And our subtopic is serving God. That's our subtopic today. We want to talk about serving God. Hmm? So let's take a look. We're going to go and call your attention to uh, one familiar passage of scripture. Go to Matthew chapter six. We ask that you would join us in Matthew chapter six. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and try to pull that for you. Matthew chapter six. And uh, let's see, uh, let's go about, uh, 
we'll go, we'll start at about six uh, and 19 and we'll try to finish that all the way out. Uh, yeah, let's go to six and 19 uh, and we'll try to finish that all the way out. Let's just, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna start here. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna start there, but we, we're not sure if we're gonna uh, get through all of this, but we're gonna start at Matthew 6 and 19. And so our topic today and our discussion, we want to talk to the people of God through words of exhortation and encouragement today. And we're not going to, we're not going to try to go past two o'clock today. We're going to try to be done in this 30, 40 minutes uh, with uh, the part one. So there is a four part series to this. So we'll be into next week on this one for sure. If the Lord's will, the Lord let us see the same. We will not be broadcasting on Friday due to the fact that we will be in our uh, National Brotherhood Conference, which is held in Lebanon, Illinois, where our presiding bishop is Bishop Dr. Charles Bennett. All right. Of the National Pentecostal Power Churches. All right. And our assisting presiding bishop is Bishop Charles Webb. Amen. And we definitely want to honor them and their wives today. And so we want to. Uh, enjoy the convention and we want to be right back here on if the Lord's will on Monday at 12 noon. And so we're going to talk about restoring spiritual vision part one and how we do that and how we make that happen is the subtopic serving God. Now anybody that stops serving God uh, loses their spiritual sight, loses their ability to see. And we can talk about Samson. We can go over there, but we'll be talking about that later. Uh, naturally, he lost his sight hmm, because he did not follow the word of God. And we too can lose our spiritual vision if we do not take the word and digest it and walk into things that God is uh, deemed to grant us spiritual vision. All right. And so we don't walk by sight only but we walk by faith. All right. But in order to restore our spiritual vision, we must stay connected to the vine and we must continue to serve God. All right. And so let us go to Matthew uh, six and 19. And we're going to do a little reading today just to lay uh, a preface and a foundation for you. He says in Matthew six and 19, and we're going to read it for you hearing it's on the screen for you. Uh, for those of you that's not, uh, uh, on the Podbean live app. For those of you that's on video conference with YouTube or Facebook or any other social platform that's streaming, you can see the video uh, screen with the scripture on there. Okay. And for those of you that are listening on, on the Podbean app, we will read the scripture. All right. And Matthew 6 and 19, he says, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust do it corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So it's important that the believer today, that we don't get caught in the hustle and bustle of life. I know we have to provide for our families. I know we have to take care of certain things in this life. But the Bible tells us life does not consist of the abundance of the things which we possess. So we must have things in perspective and know that even though we have responsibility in this life, that's not the priority. All right. And he says for, he says here, and where thieves do break, who where, where thieves do not break through nor steal. He says, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. All right. Now that's, that's first, uh, verse number 20. He says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. All right. So I want you to see that. And he says here in verse 21, he says for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hmm? I want to go to a point that came to my mind. I'm only reflecting to tie this in. 
we can know when the young lady with the alabaster box pulls it out and begins to minister to our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus. There was somebody to hold the money bag, Judas, you know, uh, with greed in his heart. The first thing come to his mind is we could have sold this for X amount of money. Hmm? And so when I look at the scripture, you say where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. We can't be so greedy and covetous, you know, over just gaining, you know, because sometimes we get caught in this life. It's just accumulating. Hmm? And so in order for our vision to be restored, we need to know that we must render service unto God. Hmm? And so we must serve the, serve the true and living God, serve the creator. Hmm? Huh? And so we shouldn't find ourselves serving the creature more than the creator. All right. And so that's what we'll find ourselves doing when we're focusing on the money bag. And Judas was wondering why did she uh, use all that precious ointment out of that alabaster box to minister to Jesus hmm? and, you know, and wipe it with her hair. Now, look at this now. He wanted to know what she was doing with all that expensive ointment when it could have been sold for money or sold for whatever other need. Hmm? But he had to stop and intervene that, and I don't have time to get it off, but he had to, I'm just interjecting this. He had to stop and interrupt him and say, hey, this is for my burial, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, it's very, very important, you know, that, you know, you know some things are uh, of great importance. And Judas didn't quite understood. He was more caught up about this life versus what Jesus was getting ready to do for the whole world. Jesus had a more important mission than to just have precious ointment put on him. <laughs> huh? And, you know, but this was for his burial, praise God. And so we too, we can treasure things that don't have real value. Praise the Lord. And so, we need to have our spiritual vision restored by God. And the only way we can get it is by serving God and through learning of his word. All right. So let's look here. He says here for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Judah's heart was somewhere else. Hmm? And uh, I never forget it. Our late, uh, well, well, I, I just put it like this here. Uh, our late Bishop uh, James Lane, he said, I'll go. You know, he said, if the Lord needs somebody, he said, here am I, send me, I'll go. Some people, they won't go nowhere without a money bag. And so Judas was more concerned about the money bag than he was the mission, praise God. And we got to make sure we're more concerned about the mission, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Glory that the gospel of Jesus Christ get through to somebody because somebody out there needs to be saved. Now, look at this. Now, I'm getting into the meat of this now. You probably say restoring spiritual vision. He talks about here in Matthew 6 and 22, he talks about light of the body is the eye. <laughs> hmm? And so, uh, oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me break this down for you. Let's read Matthew 6 and 22. He says, the light of the body is the eye. That's what he says here in Matthew 6 and 22. The light of the body is the eye. And he says here, if uh, therefore thine eye be single, the whole, the whole body shall be full of light. Hmm? One focus, one direction, one vision. Hmm? And we as believers, we got to make sure we in this, we in this world, but we not of this world. And while we're living down here, we got to have tunnel vision. Praise God. Tunnel vision, total focus on our Lord and Savior and on our, uh, on our salvation, on the plan of salvation, on, on carrying out the kingdom work. Tunnel vision. Because we can get caught in the hoopla of having two eyes. Hmm? And oh, you probably said, well, we got two eyes on our body. But the scripture is dealing with a single eye. The body is full of light with a single eye, with single vision. Hmm? 
But when we get this double minded, we get these two minds going and get two things going in two different directions. That's when the problem comes. Look at this now. He says, he said, if therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be uh, be uh, evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. Hmm? And so when we get to sin, oh, Lord. And he said, if therefore the light that is in thee uh, be darkness, how great. Hmm? In 6 and 23, he says, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Hmm? And it goes back to my initial point about Judas. Hmm? His heart was dark because his heart was set on something else. Hmm? Other than the mission and the agenda. Hmm? about the kingdom work. He wasn't concerned about the treasure. Oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. I told y'all it's going it's to take me another way. Mm. He was not concerned about no treasure. And some of us, we can be in church. We can be in ministry. We can be in the work. And some of us, we ain't concerned about that. So we just concerned about what we can get out the deal. I, I know. I'm going to say it. I know. But I'm letting you know, Glory be to God. That's now how God wanted us to be, huh? In having spiritual vision. Hmm? We he want us to have, oh Lord, single vision. Hmm? And our spiritual vision is our capacity to see clearly what God wants us to do. Hmm? We can clearly see some stuff that we want, but we got to see God's needs and wants over our own. Praise the Lord. Uh, I hope I'm sharing something with you good today. And are you my friend today? Are you putting your own agenda and your own vision above God's vision? Hmm? It's very important to see the world from Jesus viewpoint. The world needs saving. The world we need in, the the world we live in needs a deliverance. Praise God. Hmm? And the only way they're going to get it is through this vehicle that is called the church. Somebody shout glory. I know I got to go today. This vehicle that's called the church is designed to do exactly what Jesus died for it to do. Hmm? He died and shed his blood and purchased the church with his own blood that we might be the vehicle. Glory that people can come out of the world. Ecclesia church mean called out ones in the Greek come out of the world and be saved and be delivered and have a place of refuge. Glory. And I want to let you know, my friend, I want to encourage you today. uh, The spiritual insight can be easily clouded like Judas was. Hmm? And uh, our, our Bishop Mitchell, you know, Bishop Mitchell, he sing a song. I don't want to be like Judas in my heart. Hmm? Hmm? He said, in my heart. He said, you want to be more like Jesus. And I understand that song because we ought to want to be more like Jesus in our heart, deep down within. Because on the shell, on the outer shell of things, oh, we can can portray an image that do not represent God. The Bible says, having a form of godliness, glory, but denying the power thereof, glory. And so we too have another agenda. But I want to say this, having spiritual vision is your capacity to see things clearly what God wants, see it the way God wants it done. Hmm? And to see the, oh Lord, we also got to be able to see the world what perspective is coming from. And we got to make sure that we're full of light. Hmm? Cause when, when we, Oh Lord, when we compromise, uh, God's vision for the body of Christ, we'll be trying to, we'll be trying to get on top of the agenda. Hmm? 
And God want us not to worry about taking personal script. He wants to worry about all this other stuff. That's why I just ask when I need something from the body of Christ, from believers, just ask. But we should not be having all these agendas. Praise God. Look at this. He says here, but this spiritual insight can be easily clouded. We can have our own desire served. Hmm? I know, I know I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm messing up today. We can serve our own desire. Let me tell you how we can serve our desires and never fulfill the desire that God has designed for us as believers. Look at Judas the whole time he was with Jesus. He was working. He was casting out devils. He was going everywhere, seeing the miracles, seeing the deliverance like we do. We go to church every time that a service is set and we're carrying out these spiritual things, these spiritual function. I call it going through the motion. Let me let me break it down for you. I call it going through the motion and we can be going along just to get along. We can just be going through the motion in the rigmarole of exercising you know i call it you know uh j- just going through the motion if you will hmm? but not having a real hunger or deep set desire or interest in helping somebody else get a breakthrough hmm? i wouldn't be getting on here today i'd stop doing some other things and I'm, I'm using myself as an example because that's the only example i really have right now to use at this particular time We have to put what we're doing on the back burner and still make time. Even though we have other things and other agendas that come up in our life, we still have to forfeit our time for the time for the things of God. Hmm? I said, Lord, even if I have to come on the broadcast a few minutes late, I want to make sure, Lord, that I'm, oh, Lord, that I'm focused. Hmm? And my vision is set on your kingdom work. Praise God. And I'm saying things going to get in the way. I'm not telling you life is easy. I'm not telling you, my friend, that things ain't going to come up and you're going to have to shuffle some things around. But what I'm saying is the Bible says in Matthew 6 and 24, stay with me now. I'm getting ready to get out of here now. I got about 10 more minutes and I'm out of here. He says in Matthew 6 and 24, no man can serve two masters. Glory. For either he will hate the one and will love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Hmm? This is what we do. We try to serve God and then we try to serve, you know, money, materialism. Hmm? And I'm not going to be the first one to tell you. I got plenty, (laughs) you know, I got plenty of things I would like to have and like to get. In this life, I'm not talking about that. I don't want nobody to misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with accumulating, having things. Hmm? But if it means me drop, oh Lord, drop God's work, drop God's, oh Lord, business to serve my own purpose, then I've just made a, a bad, drastic error. Hmm? Because Gain is not godliness. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And so we have to be satisfied with Jesus and Jesus alone. Hmm? And if we don't, oh, Lord, and some people say, well, if I don't get nothing else, he already done enough. Do we really mean that? Because some of us, we caught in the get game. Hmm? The more I get, the more I want. Hmm? We get caught in the getting game. Hmm? And God want us to get, but he want us to get it with him in the forefront. Glory be to God. He said, I would that you prosper and be in help even as your soul would prosper. So I don't want to prosper at the expense of my soul being lost. Glory. I hope I'm making myself clear today, my friend. And I'm encouraging you uh, as we look at go to uh, Luke chapter 11 and 30, we're going to go to uh, 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 Luke uh, 11 and uh, 34. We're going to go there in a minute. Mark that down. But we 
we're going to read a little bit more here of, of Matthew and we'll go back to it next week. But let's get down to, I want to get down to, uh, uh, yeah, let's read Matthew 6 and 24 and then we'll go to Luke 11 and 34. All right. He says, no man, when he says no man, he says, no man can serve two masters for either will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That's what the scripture says. Huh? Jesus was telling them here, you only can have one master here. Hmm? Many people try to serve money in society and materialism. Hmm? They spend all their lives collecting, storing, like the guy that, oh, like the brother that oh, built new bonds, tore down the old bonds and built new bonds, spent all their time collecting and garnishing and gathering and storing it, only to die and leave it behind. Hmm? I know. I know you working to build up your retirement. And, and, you know, will you live to spend it? You know? Or will your kids, uh, you know, will your kids uh, splurge it off? You know, these are the things that we got to think about. Hmm? Why are we putting God on the back burner and why are we getting and trying to accumulate? Hmm? Are we leaving anything for the ministry hmm? to keep going? Or are we just storing up for ourselves? Now, don't answer the question. I'm just saying these are the things that we must look at when the body's full of light. When the body's full of light, I'm concerned about the ministry, not only of today, but the ministry of tomorrow. Because if the law will see fit for the ministry to perpetually keep going and we go to the grave as older saints, did we make sure it was, oh Lord, <laughs> did we make sure something was stored up for the next person to carry the ball? Or did we take it all and, oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. I got to get out of here. Hmm? Did we just take it all and waste it on our on us? And, hey, they got to get their own thing. Everybody bring their own brown bag. You know, that's how they did it in the world. You bring your own brown bag. Hmm? I'm just trying to give you a figure of speech. And you'll figure out what that means later on. But look at this. I want to share this with you. They spent all their lives collecting and storing only to die and leave everything behind. Hmm? And they desire for money and what they can buy. It outweighs their spiritual commitment. Hmm? Is that us? Our spiritual commitment to God and spiritual matters. Hmm? Is it? Oh, Lord, have mercy. And see, my thing is this. We need, we, we need to invest in us. Praise God. Hmm? The world is not going to invest. Oh, Lord, let me get out of here. The world is not going to invest in, in God. Hmm? The world is going to do what the world does. The world love is on. That's what the book tells. The world love is on. And so we have to build godly character to understand that there is only one master. I talked about it last week. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's only one God. And that's the one we should serve. Hmm? I know we have masters on our job. You said, well, how you say we, we got, we got, we got to work. We got to do this. We got to do that. Yes, you do. But he's not my God. Hmm? The foreman on the job. You're not my God. There's plenty of times I had to tell them I'm not working overtime today. Hmm? Some of us, we got to get in our backbone and tell these, Oh Lord, <laughs> I got to go. Uh, don't, don't do this. If you ain't got no faith in God. But I'm, I'm saying, I'm advising you that if you got faith in God and you rooted and grounded and you your reliance and dependence is on God, sometimes you can tell these carnal employees, look, I mean, these, these carnal employers, look, now I have to, you know, deal with some things here, but now you don't, you, you, you're not my source. God is my source. And so sometimes we have just sit down and have a heart to heart talk with our employers in some areas. Because sometimes I'm just saying, I'm not saying this fit everybody and this don't fit every, every situation, but I'm saying sometimes there are some employers. Um, they act as if they're your God. I'm going to be honest with you. I've worked for someone and I didn't work there very long and they didn't fire me. 
I just kept going until God opened up the door for something else. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I didn't let them run me. Praise God. I'm just going to tell you like it is. I didn't let them run me because there were times I wanted to go to church. I wanted to go to certain meetings. And if I didn't have the time off, I wanted it without pay. Praise God. But I realized that in every setting we grow and mature and we had to learn, hey, we committed to the job and we got to do the job we was hired to do. And so we understand all those things. But what I'm saying is you got to understand that you only have one master. And that's the point I'm driving home because sometimes we can try to serve two. And when we try to serve two, we're going to get in trouble with God because he said, I will have no other God before him. And so we can make a God out of anything. Our jobs, our wives, our spouses, our families, you know, what we got in our house. We can make that a little, oh Lord, we can make little, I don't know, little whatnots and stuff. You know, we, we can do all kinds of stuff, but we don't worship those things. Huh? We, we, we value those things. We appreciate what God has allowed us to accumulate, but those things, oh Lord, they don't have no influence on our life. Praise God. Somebody shout glory. We're going to get ready to get out of here, but I want to let you know, no man can serve two masters. He will either hate one or love the other, or else he will hold to one or despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, as we get ready to close out here with this last five, 10 minutes here, it says here in Luke, we're going to go to Luke and we're going to go back here. But we're talking about uh, restoring spiritual vision. You ain't going to restore no spiritual vision if you ain't got your heart set on God. Hmm? Your heart's got to be set on God to restore your vision. All right. And that's where we got this thought from. We must serve God. Hmm? And you will see later in Matthew 6 and 33, we got to continue to seek God. If we're going to keep our vision uh, open and, uh, and we can have a closed vision if we're not reading the word of God. So let's go to Luke. Uh, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 11 and 34. I'm going to go to Luke 34, 11, 34. Uh, 11, 34. So we're going to go to Luke 11, 34. For you reading here. We're going to go to Luke 11, 34. It says, the light of the body is the eye. He says, therefore, when thine eye is single, the whole body is also full of light. It says it there in Luke. But when the eye is evil, the body is also full of darkness. Hmm? Now look at the contrast here. He calls it, you know, when the eye is, uh, huh? When, when, you know, when, when the, you know, the, the, the eye is evil. Talks about when the eye is evil, the uh, the, the body is also full of darkness. Hmm? So, oh Lord. So we looking at everything, not through God's perspective, through the word of God. We're looking at it through our carnal desires and our feelings and our wants and our sensual desires. Then we're going to operate out of the flesh every time. Praise God. This is what the scripture is telling us. If we look out of our fleshly desires, Hmm? Lot. Oh, I got to go. I, got to, I ain't going to finish this today. Lot thought Abraham was crazy. Glory. Abraham told him, pick what way you want to go, son. I'm paraphrasing. Hmm? He, when his herdsmen, when they grew to a point where they expanded to a point where they were having problems getting along, his herdsmen had problems with his, with Abraham herdsmen. And he said, let there be no strife between me and thee. Hmm? And he said, pick which way you want to go. And I'm sure Lot said, oh, Uncle Abe, man, you didn't got old. And man, you done made a mistake here. I'm going I'm to make a killing. Glory. I'm just, I'm trying to paraphrase. Man, I'm going to make a killing. Look at that green pasture over there. Huh? He pitched his tent towards Sodom. Oh, y'all know. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I, I know. I know. Look at this scripture. He says, Thy body is also full of darkness if your eye is evil. Hmm? Lot was looking at, he was looking at the plains of Sodom. He was looking at the green. Oh, Lord have mercy. We can't just get caught up looking at the mean green money machine. 
Oh, Lord, have mercy. I got to get out of here, y'all. We're going to pick this back up. Uh, I got to quit now. I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to quit. But we're going to pick back up uh, Luke 11, 34. We can get caught in the mean green money machine. Hmm? And we don't want to be like Judas in our heart because we can be full of darkness. If the only thing we see is money and we don't see souls, we don't see ministry. We don't see people dying in the street. We don't see people hunger. We don't see people in poverty. We don't see people depressed and having all kinds of mind issues. This young man just shot himself. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This past weekend. Hmm? We got some problems, saints, people got. We got some problems all around us, and the church is the answer. And I just want to let you know, we can't get caught in the same, oh, Lord, mindset that the world is set in, me, myself, and I. Hmm? The church involves everybody that Jesus called to be saved. And he said, whosoever will, let them come and drink the water life freely. And I want to let you know today, according to Acts 2 and 39, he said, for the promises unto you and to your children, glory, and to all that are far off, even as many, Lord, our God shall call. God is calling you today. Will you answer? Hmm? Because you need to restore your spiritual vision by serving God. I know you didn't stop going to church. The pandemic stopped a lot of people going to church and they don't, they don't pray no more. They don't do church no more. Hmm? But I'm in giving you an invitation. I'm giving you an invite right now to restart your engine and fire it back up. Oh, glory be to God and start running for the Lord because he's soon to come. I don't know what day or hour we coming, but I can tell you coming soon and you need to get in a hurry and start running. If I were you, I'd start running right now. Glory. I got to get out of here, my friend. I hope I've said something to you today that would encourage you. These are the faithful words of Elder Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. I hope we bless you today. I hope we encourage you today through these scriptures to not let your body be, let your eye be evil and your whole body be full of darkness. Hmm? Let your eye be, be uh, full of light. Hmm? Let your eye be single that the body may be full of light. And so those are the words I have for you today. We hope to pick it back up on Monday. Please join us back here on the Faith in God in that TV. Uh, we're looking to be back with you on Monday, uh, which will be uh, February 14th. So please join us back here on February 14th um, at the Faith in God in that TV broadcast. So we need you to join us back here on uh, February 14th. All right. So that's what we need you to do. Um, please pray for us as we travel over the dangerous highways. Um, we want to thank God for all of you that are listening, viewing today. Thank you for joining us again. Please hit subscribe if you uh, like uh, some of the comments, some of the things that were shared. Uh, even if you uh, have a question, you can always uh Put it in the comment box and we'll try to get back with you on the next broadcast. So, Saints, we love you. We hope that you were uh, uh, encouraged and also that the word of God uh, also uh, took root uh, somewhere throughout this particular broadcast that will cause you to be sparked and would edify you in the things of God. So and that's what we uh, desire to do is to point you to Jesus. All right. And so with no further ado. I am your host, Elder Gregory Newson, with the Faith in God Internet TV. Until next time, God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless.